2022, folks. It's time to do away with the old and bring in the new. And more importantly for us, bring in newer ways to monitor our IC designs longer into their design cycles. That's right. It's time to keep checking in on our integrated circuit designs all the way into in-field operation. Oh yes, you heard me right. In-field operation. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In order to keep up with the rigorous pace of today's electronic designs, we must have visibility into each step of our IC design life cycle, including debug, bring up, and in-field operation. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Steve Pateras from Synopsys joins me to discuss the infield infrastructure for silicon lifecycle management, the role that edge analytics play when it comes to infield optimization, and how cloud analytics, runtime agents, and silicon max sensor analytics can provide you with more information than ever before for the life cycle of your IC design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Synopsys. Hi, Steve. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking about the expansion of Silicon Max Silicon Lifecycle Management to in-field operation. But Steve, before we get started, what trends are you seeing pushing this need? Well, you know, we've been talking about SLM for a while, and what's pushing this whole area really is, you know, the continuous march of electronics forward, right? So as you get into these more complex applications like ADAS and self-driving cars and into more and more AI with very complex chips driving these applications, we're seeing the need for higher performance in the silicon, higher reliability, higher safety, higher security. And so to attain these kind of metrics, we need a really a new paradigm beyond the old way of doing things, which was I design my chip as best I can and I ship it and I hope it works. So we really need a way of managing you know, these chips and these electronic systems more actively so we can ensure that they continue to operate at the highest possible levels throughout their life cycle. And that's what SLM is all about. Okay, so Steve, we have talked about silicon lifecycle management in previous Chalk Talks, but I don't believe we've talked about Silicon Max yet. So what does Silicon Max add to this platform? Right, so Silicon Max really is our new branding of our SLM platform. We launched the concept of SLM and the underlying platform, our first version, if you wish, of the platform a little over a year ago. And now as we continue to build its capabilities and in particular start moving into the in-field portion of the life cycle, we wanted to finally brand it and to reflect the fact not only that we are expanding the platform, but also that we are tying it more and more into other aspects of the design. So in particular, Silicon Max is also tied to our Test Max platform, which is our DFT and test platform. There are a lot of synergies between those two platforms in terms of underlying technology. For example, you know, various DFT structures can be used for SLM. A lot of the automation in terms of integrating and verifying DFT IP is also being used for SLM, you know, monitored and sensor IP. So it's really meant to reflect this very high level of integration and interoperability between the test world and this expanding SLM world. That makes sense. Now, can you give my audience a bit of a refresher about the details of this kind of silicon lifecycle management platform? What does this type of approach buy me as an engineer? The implementation of SLM is really based on two basic concepts. One is visibility of the silicon, right? Being able to see what's going on inside that silicon. And so what we do is we instrument the silicon. We add monitors and sensors throughout each chip. We do so in a way that is intelligent. So we do so in a way that one, provides us the visibility we need. So where do we place these monitors and sensors? What types of monitors and sensors do we need? And we do it also in a way that has the least impact on the design itself, right? So in terms of performance and power and area. Synopsis is extremely well positioned to do this given that we provide the full design flow. We've been doing that, of course, for years. And so we can integrate these capabilities into our existing design flows in such a way that we provide the most optimal way of managing this IP. The second component to SLM is once you have this visualization or this data, you want to extract as much data as you can from the chip, from these instruments, and you want to be able to, of course, analyze this information. 
So the second part is analytics, is being able to perform various targeted analytics depending on what you want to achieve. So we, for example, we're developing analytics for design optimization. We have analytics for yield optimization, for test and production analytics. And we are developing now analytics for understanding the operation of the silicon in field and being able then to react to that analysis to optimize what happens to the systems in field. Fantastic. So, Steve, this solution includes some valuable additions from other providers, right? Yes. So, as we developed this platform, you know, we realized that we, there were some holes we needed to fill in order to deliver the most comprehensive set of capabilities. We've been acquiring key components to the platform. A couple of the earlier acquisitions, one was Qualterra, June of 2020, and they were the leading provider of high-volume production analytics. And that technology we are using as a basis for all of our analytics going forward. A little more recently, we acquired Mortec, who are the leaders in PVT sensors. So this is essentially gives us the environmental understanding of the chip. So process, voltage, and temperature. And this becomes critical at all the lower nodes. When you get to seven nanometers and below, these sensors are critical not only for SLM, but also for chip operation as a whole. So Steve, can we start at the beginning and take a closer look at the early stages of the SLM lifecycle? Coming from the design side of things, we were very well versed with the early lifecycle stages. By that, I mean the design itself, design flow process itself, manufacturing of silicon, right? So fab tools, manufacturing test tools, and tests in general. And so for these early lifecycle stages, our ability to extract data from the chip analyze that data and react to it is enabled by the fact that chips exist on the test floor, right? So we're doing all this data extraction and all this optimization in these early life cycle stages through the ATE, through the tester, through the test floor, because that's where we're at at that point in time. So the infrastructure is there. We understand it. We're able to communicate to the testers to extract data. We're able to perform large volume analytics based on that data, and we're able to react and send information back to the testers to do things like adaptive testing. For example, eliminate outliers. We can change the tests we're performing based on the results to improve the efficiency of the test, improve the quality. That makes sense. So what about the in-field part of this cycle? Right. So this is where we want to move next. The challenge with in-field or the in-field part of silicon lifecycle management is that we're no longer in this controlled environment. We no longer have direct access to the chips in manufacturing. The chips, of course, have now been shipped. And are in some system somewhere, whether it be a car or a phone or a refrigerator. The question then becomes, well, how do we access the silicon to gather the data? And how do we send information back to the silicon to optimize its performance and its operation? That is where new infrastructure is needed. A new way of communicating to the chip is needed. This then leads us to this whole concept of edge analytics, where we live inside the target system, and we perform analytics from within the system itself. Okay, so can we dig into the edge analytics aspect of this? What are we really looking at here? In order to access the silicon, the hardware of a system, the only way to really do that is by having software embedded in the system itself. And so we've come up with this concept of an SLM agent, And this agent does reside in that target system. It can reside at the application layer. It could potentially reside at the firmware layer. But basically, it performs the function of edge analytics, meaning that it is local to the system itself. What it's doing, it's doing things like monitoring of the system, whether it be the software itself, the OS, or the hardware itself. So the full hardware software stack. And then it has the option of, of, based on the monitored data, it can do some localized analytics. And then, depending on the situation, you can also do real-time tuning or optimization of that system. This is where our latest acquisition comes into play. So we acquired a company called Concert.io a month ago. Concert.io were the leaders in real-time AI-powered performance optimization. So what they do is they have an AI agent that lives in the system, and it's monitoring the software stack of that system. It's monitoring the OS, aspects of the firmware. It's monitoring the application running on that stack as well. It's monitoring various system metrics and is reacting to it. So it is able to actually change various settings in the system to ultimately improve the performance of that system in real time. Excellent. Now, Steve, do you have a real life example of this kind of optimization in action? Yes. So this particular graph here shows optimization of the bandwidth of a network card. 
So the baseline here are the default settings of that card. So that would be at the 0% bandwidth improvement. And so historically, what performance engineers would do is they would play around with the settings of the card through trial and error, just through experience. So this could take weeks or months of engineering effort. The amount of improvement that could be achieved varies with the application. With Contra.io's dynamic optimization software, this is done completely autonomously or automatically, right? There's no human intervention whatsoever. And it can be done in a matter of hours or even minutes. And so this, what this example shows is the fact that, you know, after just a handful of minutes, one of the Contra.io product called Optimizer Studio was able to achieve over an 80% improvement over the baseline bandwidth performance of this card. Not only did it, was it able to do that in a matter of minutes as opposed to spending, you know, days of engineering effort, it was able to improve what the engineers were able to achieve, which was about 62% improvement. It was able to get another, you know, 15, 20% improvement. So this kind of improvement and the ability to do so in a very short amount of time is what is really game-changing, if you wish, when it comes to system optimization. So, Steve, can you explain a bit more about how this kind of SLM agent works? The whole idea of the SLM agent is to be able to perform optimization in real time. And so what we are now developing is an agent that combines the capabilities of Console.io's technology, which is really the software optimization. They're, they're looking at, the, as I said, the OS, the firmware, and the application itself, and changing settings in the software. And we're going to tie that to what we're already doing within Silicon Max, which is analytics based on the hardware operation, right? So using our various sensors within the chip and analyzing the chip performance, we're going to tie these two together to give a complete view of the hardware software stack and tie the analytics together so that we can now optimize all aspects of that system and do so in real time and do so autonomously. And this is really the concept of, of the SLM agent, which we are currently developing. One of the challenges of an SLM agent is that, of course, it requires a certain amount of compute power. And so depending on which kind of system it resides in, that compute power may or may not be there. So we are architecting more of a hybrid solution. So if you look at this graphic here, the idea here is depending on the abilities of the end system, so you can go from a, a tiny device like some small IoT device all the way up to a car, right? So depending on that system, we have the ability to place certain aspects of the edge analytics in the system itself. It could be as, as little as just collecting data to as much as doing all the analysis within the system. And anything we cannot do in the, in the target system themselves, we will have the ability to do in the cloud. So there will be this communication between the system out in the field, communicating to the cloud, and we will complement the abilities of the target system with big data analytics in the cloud itself. One of the advantages of Contra.io's technology that it is very modular in nature, allowing us to do this kind of hybrid solution. And this then provides us this ability to do optimization as a service, really. So depending on the capabilities of the, of the device in the field, we will be able to complement its capabilities and provide this optimization analytics in the cloud, servicing any device out there. Fantastic. So how does Concert.io fit into the overall Silicon Max platform? Yeah, so this diagram shows the structure of our SLM platform. And it's really a bottoms up view of the components that we are bringing to bear to provide all of this kind of analysis and optimization. If you look at the platform diagram, at the, at the very low level are the sensors and monitors that we need to gather the data we need, right? So we have environmental sensors like PVT, structural ones, think of things like pass delay monitors, and even functional monitors like bus transactions. These all together give us this very rich visibility of what goes on within each silicon device. We then have edge analytics, as I mentioned. So we want to be able to do things close to the device. So during the manufacturing stage, we have analytics that run on the ATE itself. We have the ability to download analytics into the chip itself. So think of firmware, for example, or software running on a service processor within the chip. And this allows us to do analytics local to the chip itself to optimize the chip's performance in real time. And finally, we have system level optimization. So looking at the full systems, I explained the whole software hardware stack. And this is where Contra.io technology comes in. In all cases, we want to send the data off to a database in the cloud, whether it be pure data from the sensors or data that has been already analyzed from the edge analytics. We want to accumulate this over time to have a rich view of what's going on through the full life cycle of each device, but not only of each individual device, but of all devices out there. So giving us sort of a universal view of all the devices out there, of all family of devices. This rich unified database then allows us to do big data analytics. So we have various target analytics in the cloud operating on this cloud database. 
So we have analytics for design calibration. So being able to look at volumes of data, of let's say wafer data, to understand the performance of, of the silicon device. And this allows us to calibrate our models to improve our design. We can look at volumes of data, of wafer data to improve the product ramp. How do I improve yield over time as I ramp up the production of a device? How do I improve production efficiencies, uh, test quality, test efficiencies? We have big data analytics for doing that. And finally, once the devices are out in the field, we want to accumulate data from all these devices over time and start doing things related to predictive analytics. So we want to be able to uh, see trends in the data, you know, trends in the, for example, in the timing of devices, start seeing if their chips are starting to slow down, if the, if the pass delays are becoming bigger. So we can preemptively deal with failures in the field. We can look at breaches, things like security breaches or Understanding particular security threats uh, on some of the devices out there, we can start to preempt the same threats occurring or th the same breaches occurring on other devices, similar devices out in the field. It all relates to preemptive analytics, which is the infield part. And again, having the concert IO technology living in the system allows us to develop that kind of globalized infield management. Excellent. Well, Steve, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much, Amelia. It was great talking to you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Synopsis. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.